Restoration Ridge. That's what I call this lovely scene of two deer grazing in the early morning light, a little fog and dew on the grass. I think we can have a lot of fun with this one. As you can see, I've got some nice reference photographs that we could be using any of the silhouettes of the deer. And what I thought would be very easy for a lesson here in these painting classes in oil was to show you how you can utilize a black canvas. Now, I have a canvas up on the uh, easel that has been painted with black acrylic. The black acrylic is allowed to drive approximately one hour. You don't want to work too quickly with your oils on top of this. Make sure you allow uh, adequate drying time for your acrylic. So this will, the paints that I will be using will not be mixing with this because this is dry. They will be covering areas, but I will use the black acrylic to help me with the silhouette of the deer and for the grasses and all, for the darker areas. So when you have a composition that has a lot of dark in it, such as this particular painting, or even a painting that has more lights in it but has a darker foundation, as this picture here, you can start with a dark canvas. But if, the, if it's acrylic paint and allowed to dry, then you won't have the trouble of making your light values muddy by mixing with a wet black oil. So this will work very easily for us today. Now, I got a silhouette of two deer that are going to be sitting up, uh, up on a little ridge. And I just took the outline silhouette. You can get that from photograph, pictures, even coloring books are great places to get your uh, silhouette. Here's another one from a magazine. Uh, it's kind of a soft, mellow, monotone uh, feeling of sepia tones. But it has nice uh, female and male deer uh, in the mist. And that's part of what we're going to be doing. So I could have used this particular uh, layout of the deer. But I have two deer that I have a pattern drawing of an outline. And I took this outline and I used it on adhesive-backed paper. You can purchase that at your printing stores or in sometimes in your uh, office supply stores. And they have adhesive-backed paper that is sticky on the back. And I took this pattern and I cut out a silhouette of the same deer on the adhesive-backed paper. As you can see, this is sticky on the back. And I'm going to decide where I want the deer. In the painting in the background, which I did earlier, I have a deer almost near center because he's really not going to be as strong a focal point. And I kind of get him positioned a little bit and don't press him on yet. And here's another piece of the other deer. And you can see how I peel off a protective backer on the back of this and allow the adhesive part of the paper to be utilized to stick to the canvas. So let's determine how close we want these together. They're both looking kind of over their shoulder as if there's uh, someone coming. And we want to place these on the canvas. So you can put these anywhere you like on your composition. And once you determine where you're going to be placing them in their positioning, I'm going to just lightly touch the outside edges and allow the adhesive part of the, the glue on the paper to kind of gently grab the canvas. Now, you don't want to press too firmly because it actually sticks fairly well, and especially on the acrylic backing. So what I do is kind of burnish the edges or press the edges and not so much the center of the adhesive part because then it makes it more difficult to uh, remove. This is an adhesive back paper that isn't meant to stay on for a permanent period of time. It's like, almost like your name labels that you get on your uh, shirts that stick to your shirts and don't allow you to have that strong feeling of uh, glue stuck to your clothing. So that's what we're looking for here. So I've pretty well positioned them a little to the right of center because I'm going to have some foliage over here. And now I'm going to concentrate on how can I get that mistiness, that soft feeling of the backdrop. Well, because the cutout is protecting the black area, just like mascoid or frisket would do in your watercolors, then I don't have to worry about the background colors getting into the deer, and I'll have that nice dark silhouette. So let's go down to the palette. And I have a large two-inch brush, and I've already pre-mixed some kind of gray tones. I've got a little bit of my soft white, and I took a little bit of yellow ochre and put it into it, and I took a little violet made with a little blue and alizarin. And if it gets too purplish or doesn't get gray enough, I'm looking for a warm, light gray. And you can see against the white of my palette just exactly how warm this is. Now, I've got another picture as I go up to the canvas to show you how we have a lot of options here. Here's a nice little photograph that was taken uh, in a magazine. And you can see very lightly uh, two small deer down here with a nice little sunset. Well, I wanted to get the mistiness of the morning sunrise, but you can see the color on my brush is really just kind of a gray. It's not too yellow. It's not too purple. I'm wanting it to stay in more of a subtle tone. But it doesn't mean you can't use and mix your colors lighter or warmer, depending on the landscape that you want. So since I'm going to keep mine a little foggy and, and soft in the coloring, I want to just use this color barely a warm gray. 
I'm looking at the back picture, and the lightest value is up in the upper left area, kind of the, the misty area in the fog. And you can see the paint covers the black canvas very easily, and it's not mixing. I'm going to come down almost to the first left ear, and almost touch him right on his fanny, just to get a little flow of connection there. OK. Come over a little to the left. Now, immediately, I want my colors darker and darker. So we go back down to the mixing spot, again, using alizarin, Prussian, or if you have a violet, just use a violet, and use a little brown, either Van Dyke, you can use burnt umber, any color, to keep it kind of gray. I don't want any of these colors to be too vibrant, too intense. I want more of a subtle effect in this, almost a foggy mist. I have the, another picture, and this is a photograph, that has a different tone of oranges. So you could use orange tones back here for your background. But the value is similar to the colors that I'm using. I want to get darker as I get away from that. So immediately, as I start blending, this is a little bit on the purple side, I'm going to blend this in and ease back into the lighter tone. I use a large brush so that I can mix and blend and get rid of the stroke marks. That's about all I'm going to have with the light values in there. This painting should go relatively easy today because of the fact that there's just a few colors that I use. And of course, you can select your own colors and your composition. All you need is a dark canvas with the silhouette of the animal that you would like. And there's no detail in the animal, so we don't have to worry about it. It's kind of backlit. So I'm going to wipe the brush. I'm going to get a little more blue and brown in the color so that I get more of a grayed, shadowy blue. And as I come up to the canvas, I'm going to continue on across the top for kind of the sky area. And this is an early morning fog almost. And there's a picture up on my reference board that has the uh, really gray-gray tones and doesn't have as much lavender and purples as I'm putting into it. So all you have to do is find a color, kind of match it. We'll bring that down pretty close to the uh, antlers of the uh, deer. That's about as far as I want to go here and over there. Kind of blending back in so that this begins to stay a little lighter up in that area. If you want distant trees, you can do a little poke and push of your brush so that you get the little faint look of trees in the, in the mist and the fog. And you don't have to have those there, but they add something for a far away look. Give more depth and dimension into your painting. Now we're going to go darker. Again, I'm just adding darks to the same brush. Doesn't take a lot of paint. So I'm using Prussian and a little either raw umber, Van Dyke, alizarin, any color, just going to more like almost a charcoal gray. And I think I'm going to need a touch more light into that. Let's see. Yeah, this is kind of a blue tone. It's a little too vivid, so I'll add a little bit more brown to it. OK, this will be a backdrop. Well, we'll start on the sides, and then I'll come back in. That's almost a little too dark. So we'll start right over in here and over in here, and then I'll get a little bit more mixed into it. Yeah, that's a little too blue. I'm going to dust the blue out of the brush. If it gets too dark, change your color. Lighten the value by adding a little white. And let's see, we'll determine with a little more. I think I used Van Dyke. Van Dyke's a better graying color than uh, your burnt umber. Burnt umber would start turning a little too greenish. Yeah, I'm looking up at the reference picture behind me, and I think that's going to be much better. Yeah, that's much better in its value. So I'm going to go back behind the deer. When you have a cutout, of paper that you're wanting to apply onto a canvas. You don't want to stroke up to it, or the paint will ooze underneath it. And that'll give you a little more paint to work against. So if you touch on the paper and pull away as you're blocking in, you're less likely to get the paint up underneath it. So let's get this kind of surrounded. We're surrounding the top of the deer uh, all the way around, just a little bit under his belly, so we make sure we can find that. And then it's going to be grasses down below. So I'll already start stroking with a vertical stroke to leave the black to uh, indicate a little bit of the grass effect. OK, I'm blending around. This is backdropping them, making sure I pull away and off the paper. Don't worry about your design just yet. Just get it kind of blocked in. There's going to be grasses here. So because I know I'm going to have a grassy shadowed field there, I go ahead and start pulling the grass stroke or the the blue down, so it leaves a grassy top for some of the grasses. Yeah, that's about all we need for that. Now, I've got a little paint on my finger and gotten it on my canvas over here, but the nice part about your acrylics, if I take a paper towel with a little turp, where I got my finger into paint and got it on the area black, it just washes right off if you have a clean paper towel. 
So I think I'm going to need a clean one to get that off of there. So basically, all I need to do, the acrylic won't remove because it's already dry. OK, I'm going to dust my brush off. Or if you have too much paint, I'm going to get a little bit of a soft bushiness with this edge, softening up into the other one, making sure I don't have any too distinctive uh, impression, because I want to keep this foggy and misty, although some of the pictures I have are much more distinctive. There's a little indication down on the bottom of maybe some water down into uh, the area. So I'm going to use a light touch and bring a little streaks, maybe have a little indication, maybe, there's water. Doesn't look distinctive, but could be there. And it just takes a few strokes of the brush to suggest that. I think what I need to do on this composition is to take a clean, dry, thin brush and soften a little bit. Some of the areas are a little too uh, abrupt on their edges, so I want to keep this very light and foggy. To get a nice mist or fog, you want to keep a very diffused look to the objects. And that's what I'm doing now, just by wiping a dry brush and kind of doing a little crisscross X stroke, making sure that everything just kind of melts softly together. Much nicer in its effect. Now there's a tree or bush that's going to be over here, so I didn't cover this section of the canvas. I just left the black there. But I'm going to put leaves and bushes over there. If I feel like I'm too dark in an area, see I lighten this, I like it better, I'll even add just a little white to my brush just to change it and lighten it and make it just a little lighter value. Add a touch of white, wipe the brush, blend it in, and you can change the coloring that's already there just if it's too vivid or too dark. Maybe that's a little better. It's got a lot of blue in it, so I'm going to just melt that up into the pink so there's no abrupt connection of colors. What doesn't look attractive is when you get a hard blue and a hard purple. And don't let those colors connect and blend nicely. That's when it's not as pretty. Just a faint look to it. So that's not too difficult at this stage. Just making sure I keep a soft edge at the top of the field. Well, I think that pretty well blocked in the backdrop. And again, use any coloring that you particularly like. I think I'll pull this picture down for just a minute and show you up here. See the grays and the trees? You can get more distinctive in the illusion. This is very simple in the fact that keep it soft, especially the bottom areas and sometimes have a more defined illusion. So we're going to be end up doing a tree on the left. Let's go ahead and do that. The best way that I find to do that is a sponge. Now, you can use a mop brush. You can use a small brush. But let's try it with a sponge. I'm going to wet the sponge in my odorless thinner, go down to some raw umber, just tap it onto the brush. If you want it cooler or more violet, add purple into it, just to keep that into a really dark, shadowy color. Don't introduce any strange new colors. You want to keep the same color flow. And this one's done mostly with alizarin, Prussian, and brown. And let's just put a little inky, blocky, blotchy effect of leaves and all, kind of silhouetting up against that mist. Sometimes you want large areas kind of filled in solid and get a little tree. So you just press and lift. Don't stroke and bring that down. So that gives me that dark area over there. Of course, you need something to kind of hold the leaves and all up. So take a liner with a little bit of the same dark and just pull up out from underneath and let little sticks and twigs lift up into a little branch up there and keep it kind of loose. Just takes a few lines suggesting the support to those leaves. Had to add a little more dark to this. Comes right up out of the shadows. Now, before I do anything with the grass illusion, which I am going to be doing, I want to start looking at the silhouette of the deer. Well, this is the fun part of it. I need to find a knife. Let's get one with a sharp point on it. I'm going to wipe it, and I'm going to use the point of the knife. And before you remove your uh, cutout, you'll notice that I didn't go too much over the legs. We might pull just a little bit down over the legs, just to give a little color flow, but then I can always paint it back up. Bring the light so that we get the legs going down into the grass. You don't want to go lower than that. Let the black canvas. Now uh, do the work of the grass. I'm going to wipe the knife. I'm going to pry up underneath the paper and just kind of peel it off. The slower you peel it off, the less likely you're going to leave little pieces behind like I just did on its leg. Sometimes I find when you put an acrylic coating on the painting, it will actually be harder to peel off because it sticks to the acrylic more. So you pull real slowly. It has a tendency to 
not stick as well. And that's another reason why you don't want to put the uh, uh, press down too firmly on it. Remove the art appeal and pry up all of it. Again, start from one section, slowly peel it. I used to be very impatient and peel it very quickly. And I find the slower I peel it, the less it tears apart. And then you've got your silhouette. Well, that's almost the illusion that I have in this photograph without doing any detail. So I've got a few seepage areas where the background went in behind it. So you can see I've got the overall effect of the, the deer with just having, my real effort was put in cutting out the silhouette to making sure I had a good silhouette. So what we have to do now is make sure that the edge inside the deer doesn't look like it's just been cut out and glued on. We need to take a little flat brush. Uh, I think I'm gonna get a fairly large one to save time. I'm gonna wet it, my thinner, and I'm gonna go get some almost black, which I'm making by using my Van Dyke Prussian and alizarin again, same mixture of the colors that are in the painting. And I'm making it as dark as I possibly can to where it appears to be black, even though it's not a black from a tube. And I'm gonna go in and start touching the canvas with almost no paint on the brush and just tickling the edge so that I get a little bit of a connection of a moist paint and it'll keep it from looking like a roll of paint on the edge. And touch up some of my darker areas. Making sure that I just am actually blacking in and putting a little paint on the black acrylic. Just bring that on down into the shadows. You can see I don't have much paint on the brush. I'm just kind of suggesting the legs a little longer so where it was cut off it's not too obvious. This just helps make it look a little more, less like a cut out and glued on effect. So it kind of connects the cut out to the foundation just in case. We don't want to look like it's too much of just a cut out area. So a little bit of paint. There's another illusion that I like here that sometimes I like to bring a little lighting around the back edge where the, uh, that misty light, there's a little light trying to break through. And this is a very strong light, but the other picture I have in the reference board gives them just a very subtle light. So I'm gonna use just a touch of that. I think you can see it on the painting behind me, how I put a little bit of light on the left edge of the deer. So I'll use a little touch of white on one side of the brush into some of this blackish color. And if it's too distinctive of a blue or alizarin, just add some more of the other three colors, alizarin, Prussian, brown, so you, don't, you get a fairly light lavender gray. I don't want to get a pure white, it'd be too strong. I'm wiping the brush, making sure that part of the brush is dark. I'm gonna bring a little bit of light on the rump of this deer, just enough to give him a little edging. And I put a little blue up there so it's picking up the blue. A little light there, a little kiss on the back of the neck, down the left edge of this one, just kind of skimming the edge. And then I'm gonna actually soften that. A little bit on a few of the, uh, I was going to call them antenna, the antlers, and just put a little accent of lights on them, just to soften it. Now, it's not much paint, but I'm going to just wipe the brush. And this is optional, again, you don't have to do it. Put the dark value back on the brush, and make sure now I soften into the edge of that so that it really barely is there, so that the inside edge of that light is not abrupt. I'm actually diffusing it and mixing just a little into some dark. And I need the dark wet paint just to make sure it softens a little bit. So that gives me a little detail on the deer. And of course you can detail them very strongly. Need to connect that edge there just a little bit. Now doesn't that look a little better than having it? If you've got a little too much area, wipe your brush and pull the background down to it. You can move the background just a little bit too if needed. Okay, for the grasses, we're gonna use a liner brush. Now there's mop brushes, there's liner brushes, there's lots of different ways that you can put the uh, detail on the grasses. I'll show you a few strokes with a mop brush because it has very unique characteristics, but I wanna do most of it with a liner. I think I'll have time to show you a few different tricks today. Again, using a Prussian, alizarin, and brown mixture, or if you want purple and, and black will work. And we're gonna take the brush, and let's go over here because I don't want much of this. I'm gonna make a weedy look instead of just strong, grassy, stiff grasses. I'm gonna tilt the handle down hit the bottom corner of this and let a little bit of the wilder look to the grasses uh, show up down over on the right. Not gonna go too much underneath him, but over here and, and this section over here, if I hit connecting the black on the black, you'll barely see it, but as I go a little higher, you can see this looks more like a natural look to the grass, 
more than a, a pressed grass in there. We'll just kind of tuck the bottom of that little tree in there. Let that mix right into there. So now I can redesign the upper edge. If you sweep it a little bit, it'll get that grassy look. See how I kind of lift up, raise the grass. Make sure you put a good shadowing underneath them. And then it just kind of blends right into the black. You can even reflect it down into the water, if that's going to be water. If there's a shadow from the deer or a reflection of the deer, you might want to put an indication of it uh, into the water. But I'm not really trying to make a mirror image reflection, which would be interesting, but take a little more time than I have today. I'm softening now, making sure it's not too abrupt or too hard. If you wipe your brush and let it mix wet into wet and get a softer edge here, It'll even be more attractive than if it's too bluntly stated. OK, and I'll fit right down. Well, this painting pretty well takes care of itself when you use the black acrylic. But detail work is always something that you can develop and build to a higher level. So get good reference material. Let's use the liner brush. Thin down with some odorless thinner. And start looking for the grasses around the feet of the deer. And I have, again, a photograph. If I wanted to go back and add trees over here and the other things, you can go back and add. It's really not complicated. I always thought this was interesting in this photograph. There's no little tail. If you want to put a tail, you can put a tail on the, the deer. But I'm just using a juicy wet brush, and I'm going to try to characterize these little, brush, uh, little grasses that you see right here and lift up, lift up, until I get that nice, soft, silhouetting, grass weedy effect. You don't want to get it too high, but I only need a little bit on the top detail. I don't need a lot of hard detail in there. Make the grass a little wild. Lift up. Really does a nice effect. And I think anyone can do this particular type of a painting because it takes more time in cutting out your silhouette. And I get my reference material from photographs, magazines. My students send me photographs that I work from. And uh, even coloring books are an excellent source of patterns, even though you can redesign your actual uh, illusions with the, you know, changing the style of the coloring books and change your coloring in the background, but you can use the pattern of the silhouette. Now I'm just working up on the ear of the antler, the ear of the deer, the antler of the deer, and blocking it in. There's a couple of pictures I have that have the beautiful uh, heads of uh, the antlers on the deer, and boy, they're nice. I decided I want to bring that back down to a little darker. Wasn't too happy with that light edge. Doesn't contrast enough, so I'll bring it back to a dark. So if you're not happy, adjust it just by painting the wet on wet and readjusting the, the style. He has a little more rump on him, so we've got to bring that rump up just a little bit more. It'd be nice if we all could just kind of take off the paint and add it on. It's easier to put it on than it is to take it off, though. I think that's the same way in painting and and uh, wait. <laughs> OK, let's go down and see if we can put a little suggestion in the water uh, of a surface ripple. Now, there isn't one in, my, in the photographs that I have here. There's flowers down there. If your edges are hard here, don't be concerned of the color tone change between the wet paint and the dry acrylics. When you end up going in later, and if you varnish these, and these are very important that you want to varnish this type of painting, uh, it will unify the, the look of the, the wet oil and the dry acrylics, because the dry acrylic is kind of flat. So you want to make sure you do that. OK, a palette knife, if I can find it. No, I had him here somewhere. There he is. And we're going to go ahead and use just a little bit of the knife edge with a weak color. You don't want it too bright. OK, get a little bit on that. And just hint at a little movement on the surface of these lines so it'll look like water. That'll give a better effect. OK. I think that's all we're going to really need to do to this one to really make it kind of different. And if you want to work and spend detail and highlights on it, take your time. Don't rush the paintings, but think about them. Plan them. Give yourself good uh, drawings and foundations. And I think you'll have great results. Oil paintings very forgiving, so you need to practice and plan ahead. Thanks for joining me today.